You want the microphone? Maybe I'll just I'll just have two microphones. And um yeah, you can just you can listen, huh? Oh, you do want one? Okay. We look kinda cool. Like we should do this one camera thing more often. Yeah. Okay, you wanna say hi? Hello, 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 and welcome to The Squeeze. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, because this is the first time that we've seen them since what? the New Year. Yeah, this is our first solo episode in the New Year. It doesn't mean we haven't seen them. Yeah, but in this... We've in seen this, them about 12 times already. <laughs> in this fashion. What in the world? Happy New Year. <laughs> what is it? April? Until last week of March. Okay. Well, welcome, and I guess Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hope you're having a terrific Wednesday. <laughs> and New Year? Sorry, I'm done. Uh, Ridiculous. How are those New Year's resolutions going, everyone? Oh, don't bring it up. Not to bring it up or anything. I know there's some things that I've had on my list that I have been able to, like, stick to. That's such a buzzkill. And have been good? Nobody wants to talk about that. Okay. Well, I just want them to know that they're not alone. <laughs> Whoever did stick with it um, and conquered it, I'm so proud of you. We get it. You're really cool. am. Um, but yeah, I can't can't say the the same. Yeah, I don't know the last time I I did ever conquer a resolution. I mean, if it was like a long term one, yeah. But if it was if it's ever one of those ones that's like okay for the month of January I'm gonna do this. Um, or something like that. I don't think I've ever done that. I've done, I've actually done a couple that weren't on my new like on my resolution. Well, I guess they weren't in the overallness of health. Like I wanted to be healthier this year. But a couple times I've gone like Is overallness a word? No, I well, I made it one. Okay. Um <laughs> uh, I've gone like a few a few weeks without drinking. Like a multiple times just because I Feel like we've been kind of eating out and I was like, that's just extra calories and extra money that I don't need to be spending. Yeah. Because, you know, I I was going to say I love alcohol, but that sounds bad. I love I love cocktails. Like, I I think it's so fun. Like, the, yeah, you the art of cocktail making, I love. Yeah. Um, what? I don't want. You don't love alcohol by any means. Like. Yeah, like I have one drink and yeah. I'm fine. So that's kind of why I was like, this is kind of dumb for me to like. You don't love what alcohol does, does to you. Yeah. Because the fact is alcohol does literally nothing to her. Yeah. She well, could. I mean, she doesn't, but she could have like three, four drinks and just be the same person. It's very annoying. Yeah, I don't. I also just don't like feeling buzzed, but I love the art of like cocktail making. Like I love, I love that like that of, of alcohol. Um. But it's kind of pointless for me to just like have one drink if we're, you know, going out to dinner every night. That's just extra calories that I don't like yeah. need. So I've been doing like a couple mocktails. I actually found um, zinc in Malibu makes a really, really, really good um, alcoholic free uh, Aperol spritz. Yes. It's so good. Yeah. You've been on a spritz kick. I have been on a spritzy kick. It's like, it's like a summer or spring, not summer, wrong season. It's like a springy drink to me. It's yeah. spring into summer, I would say. Yeah, it's definitely a summer drink. Well, now that we've covered Happy New Year and our yeah. resolutions in nearly April, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think um, we should just address um, an elephant in the room, maybe. Yeah. And that would be this room. Um, if you've wondered why recently we haven't been in our normal studio, because I don't think we have um, really addressed it other than jokingly with Alex, Alex. Warren. Um, we have had to do some work on our house. And as you guys know, our studio is in our house. Um, so we've, we've been bopping around a little bit. And okay. we've had to really makeshift uh, some studios. So that is why it's been a little inconsistent. But we will be back home in studio soon. Very soon. Soon. Not next week, but soon. Yeah. So bear bear with us. Bear with us. But I'm kind of digging this. Yeah. I never thought I would wear sunglasses. Like, I never thought I'd be outside. I thought it could be a, a fun vibe. Wearing sunglasses. Yeah. And slippers and 
and jackets. Yeah. I, like I, mean, I mean, I'm in sweat, this exact sweat off in probably every other episode that we do. Wait. But. What is this? Oh, this. <laughs> this. Can we add like a sound effect? Ready for sound effect? Okay. okay. Um, funny you should ask, Taylor. Um, this is my makeshift citrus got real. Wow. There are a couple More like little cactus got real. Sucks. Uh, sucks. Suck you got real. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so well. Um that doesn't sound That's right. cute though. Yeah, thanks. Wow. I wanted to surprise you um with that. So we, we can do citrus got real. It just uh looks not like lemons okay. in a jar. Great. So you wanna you wanna pull one of those? Sure. Let's do front and center here. Okay. Give me my gem row. All right. <laughs> what is your middle name? <laughs> Renee. <laughs> my middle name Renee is after my nana, Irene. Yes. Yeah. Is 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 Renee short for Irene? You know, I have I have wondered this exact question before. <laughs> Is you so confidently have always said that, and I've just well, wondered because like, my mom says that's what it is. My nana is very proud that that is. Oh, I have something else that I need to talk about. Oh yes, that just reminded me. Absolutely, we'll get to that. Making a note so I don't forget. Um, yeah, Ren- Irene, Rini, Renee. I think it, I yeah. think that's what it is. But even every time I see Nana, she's like, she's my my one and only granddaughter, my goddaughter, and she's named after me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's just something I've never put together. Maybe there's like some Greek to Greek to English translation there. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't think Irene is necessarily a strictly Greek name. Yeah, but you know, there's like Dimitri is Jimmy. Dimitri is Jimmy. Yes. Oh, I... <laughs> we don't need to go through all the Greek. Oh, because yeah. like in English, there's like Omer. James. There's Omer. Jimmy too. is James. Omer goes to Jim. I have an uncle Omer that goes to Jimmy. Dimitri is my papu's name. See, and that he also feels goes. like a stretch. <laughs> Omer. Okay, to let's James? move on from the Greek name. Bro, I don't know these things. Okay, her middle name is Renee. <laughs> um, mine is Daniel. Mine is after my father. Dan. Daniel. Daniel. Big Dan. Should I pull another one? Yeah, sure. The zombie apocalypse is coming. Who are the three people you want on your team? Mm. Um, I mean, probably you. Mm. I don't know if that's a good you decision. Could, you could do like karate and, um, you know. Mm. Ooh, Conor McGregor. That's what I want. Interesting. Why is that? Um, he can fight them off. Mm. I don't know anymore. Um, not anymore. He's always got it. Should, do you want me to say Jake Paul? <laughs> He can, I have faith in Jake. I, think, okay. I feel like he could do it. Okay. He's got that craze in his eyes. Okay. Who, no, who's good at fighting zombies? Like uh, Emma Stone's character in Easy A. Okay. Like Emma Stone and Jesse Eisenberg. Okay, great. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like zombie movies. I just watched Shaun of the Dead on uh, our airplane ride. They were good at fighting zombies. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's Emma Stone. Who was the other person you said? Jesse Eisenberg. And um, Jake Paul. He was in an EZA, right? I can't remember. You think I know these things? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm horrible with movies. Huh. Okay, you want to do the last one? Uh, can I just throw Dwayne The Rock Johnson in there? Oh, frick. I feel like, you know, he could just like hold me and I'd be, I'd feel very safe and comforted. The whole, yeah, just hold you in his arms. Or Jason Momoa. Why do I want to say Kevin Hart? No. I feel like he would make light of the situation. Yeah, but that's only going to last so long. He could like make one of those like funny screams that he does. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to go with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, John Cena, and Jason Momoa. Okay, great. Momoa. 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 Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, you didn't make the cut there. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, we got one left here. Should we just do it? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Drum roll, please. Or we leave it there for the next guest nope. that comes here. If you could be fluent in any language, what would it be and why? Greek. Yeah. The actually, it's a toss-up. Nana, plug your ears. Oh, it's wow. a toss-up between Greek and Spanish. Okay. I just like I love Spanish. We were just in Mexico. We'll get to that later. But like, just like love Spanish culture. But I am also Greek, and I would love to be able to speak Greek to my nana fully. Yeah. So, and I have family in Greece still. How did so. that not get passed on to you? You want to call Nana up right now, and she'll tell you. 
What would the answer be? My mom. She's mad at my mom still. Oh. My mom my mom was fluent in Greek and didn't teach me. Wow. Is this yeah. still a, a thing? It's a very it's very much a sore spot. She's spot-like. upset with her. Yeah. And then Nana did buy me Rosetta Stone at like age eight. Aww. But it was when computers still had like like the de- the giant desktop, like on the ground. Like there was a screen and then there was like the actual like desktop. Of course. And we I got to the point where I had to speak the words into the microphone, but we couldn't get our desktop was like really old and we couldn't get the microphone to work so then I couldn't keep doing it wow yeah that's my story that's a really sad one yeah it is so I would like to be fluent in um either one of those languages okay mm-hmm. okay man I don't know I Spanish seems like the like I could use it the most yeah um but it could just be really cool to like oh French or something yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that's a pretty language. I feel like that's such a, mm. um, yeah, such that a, could be um, all like bougie. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, like, finesser. Mm. What if I just like could bust out Mandarin? Well, yeah, or like, um, pig Latin. <laughs> I didn't get that. Pig Latin. I don't even know what that means. Did you ever speak that? No, I didn't. Isn't that where the, you like replace, replace the, I, I think I did that in, junior high yeah, i big, can't remember those big things. in the big in the highs the junior highs and the big in the big the in the highs. highs okay where should we catch everyone up at oh, i feel like we should just start with january january for us was um packed with football yes. we were go- we were gone every weekend of january for um we were five it was, weeks in a row it was the rose bowl and then the national championship the college go blue go blue um in houston that was very fun um, and then the following week we went to the first Detroit Lions playoff game and then the following week we went to the second game and then the following week we went to the San Francisco we went wild card broke divisional our hearts. then the NFC championship and uh, that was um it it was not yeah what we had hoped for let's not talk about it um you know Taylor and I have he's really instilled this love of football into me which I am thankful for because, you know, it's something fun that we get to do together. But I'm also um, not happy about it because I felt like I was equally as heartbroken as Taylor was when the Lions lost for a good week. Like after we had gotten home from Santa Clara, we were driving up in our driveway. I looked at him and I was like, I feel like I just got broken up with. Yeah. Like we were just <laughs> heartbroken. Um, we were obviously... Um, you know, a couple of weeks after we were happy for the 49ers because we've become friendly with them. Oh my gosh, you wore Kristen's jacket. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't talked about that either. Oh, yes. Yeah. I wore a very cool jacket um, designed by the one, the only Kristen used check. Freaking boss woman. I want to be her when I grow up. Yes. She's so talented and I feel like she's just, she's so inspiring, like how hard she works and it's really cool to see how much support and love she's been getting from everyone but also my i think it's the sweetest from her husband her husband oh, just yeah. seems like a gem and you know he'll like throw up little scissors and they just they are just seem like the sweetest couple yeah. so that was awesome that jacket was really fun yeah and I just the whole that. delivery of it being you know awesome. lost in transit many many times fedex pulling through and yeah that was all her delivering it on the field yeah it was pretty cool I'll I'll wear another one next year. Yeah. If you'll make me one, Kristen. I shall make you one. Subtle plug, subtle plug. Um, yeah, that was kind of our January. It was a lot of football. We had a lot of fun. And we are very, very grateful that we got to um be a part of the pride. Yeah. And experience some some good times. February brought us um a couple things. Mm, what's that? My favorite was your birthday. Mm, cute. Which also happened to be on Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. A little bittersweet. Yeah, we were we were very thankful for the opportunity to go to the game and the game, you know, it was fun, but um we were st- we were still not over the heartbreak of the Lions. Oh, yeah, I was so selfishly <laughs> hoping it was gonna be the best birthday of my life because I would be celebrating my birthday at the Super Bowl rooting on my hometown team. Yeah. That would have been insane. But um, you know, next year. I don't think the Super Bowl will fall on my birthday again, but next year. <laughs> I know. It's always, it's always like right, right by your birthday. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it's better that the Lions weren't playing. But 
a good game. We love we love the Niners. We love the Chiefs. So um, it was a good it was a good little birthday. We were also in Vegas because Taylor was doing a fun little project. Ooh, yes. Yeah. I guess I can. I guess I can tease this a mm. little bit. The squeeze exclusive. <laughs> As our listeners know by now, I not only prioritize my mental health, uh, but also overall physical health. I feel like they just really cohesively go together. And I am a little embarrassed to admit, but um, when my schedule gets super busy, I don't always prioritize my physical health because it definitely gets a little hard to put that first when you're busy with work and life and whatever it is. But luckily I have found Aloe Moves. The app makes it easy to keep my wellness routine on track because they have everything in one place. There's yoga, there's Pilates, there's fitness classes, mindfulness, self-care tips, healthy recipes, and so much more. It's truly a one-stop shop. Classes range from five minutes all the way to an hour, so you can no longer use the excuse of, I don't have enough time. Unlock your personal wellness routine with Allo Moves. Go to allomoves.com now and use code SQUEEZE30 for an exclusive 30-day free trial and enjoy 20% off an annual membership. That's allomoves.com, code SQUEEZE30. Alamoves.com code squeeze 30. Shout out to Astapro for sponsoring this episode and providing us with some free samples. Spring is coming and I am so excited for warmer weather and longer, sunnier days. However, I am not looking forward to the allergies that come with spring. But thankfully, Astapro is a first of its kind nasal allergy spray. It's the fastest 24-hour over-the-counter allergy spray. It starts working in 30 minutes while other allergy sprays take hours. Astapro is the first and only 24-hour steroid-free allergy spray. It also delivers full prescription strength indoor and outdoor allergy relief from nasal congestion, runny and itchy nose, and sneezing. Get fast-acting nasal allergy symptom relief with Astapro. Go to astaproallergy.com for a discount so you can Astapro and go today. A-S-T-E-P-R-O allergy.com. Astapro and go. Use as directed for relief of nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezy, and itchy nose due to allergies. Um, yeah, I can't say too much, but um, me and my friend Jason Kennedy are um, producing a show um with our good friend jimmy darts who is a newly married man congrats yes, congrats jimmy if you don't know jimmy um he is a terrific human um he also is a youtuber um everything He's, content creator yeah, yeah. and he kind of he was one of the first people this that started the whole like blessing people in the streets but he his thing is he makes, he presents people with a, an act of kindness. An opportunity kindness to show. Test. Yeah. Um, and so it really gets you to root for these people. Um, and he just finds the most unbelievable, selfless human beings um, who really are just unsung heroes out there. Um, and that's all I can really say. We filmed our first episode. In Vegas um, during the Super Bowl, and man, did it go terrific! Cannot wait for people to see the show. We are um, yeah. currently filming, um, and it'll be out sooner than later. So excited! Yeah, it's going to be a really, really awesome and like important show. Important and life giving, and I just feel like it's really cool that you guys are able to make this kind of content or, you know, make this kind of show and, you know, remind people that, you know, kindness is such a big thing. I mean, we've talked about it on the podcast a lot before, like doing something for someone gives you more in return than it does, you know, that actual person. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good little reminder. So we'll keep you posted on that one. Okay. Keep you posted. Keep you posted. Um, You should probably, probably be following us if you're not um, on social media because that would help Taylor Lautner and Tay Lautner. Lautner, I said Lautner. It's fine. Wow. Uh, uh, well, the people. Well, for the people. We're past that. Okay, Lautner. Sorry. We've started saying it correctly. We can't go back. Okay. Tay We're going to really Lautner confuse the world. And Tay Lautner. Sure. I think it's the O 
Never mind. Um, and then also you can follow us um, at The Squeeze and also subscribe if you're looking at us in our beautiful sunglasses and sweatsuits right now. Or if you're listening to us and maybe hear some birds chirping in the background, you can click or follow. Or a dog barking. Or a dog. Yeah, what? she was barking. What is she barking at? I don't know. She probably saw someone walk by the room. Oh, my. I don't know. Um, next is this month, March. Ooh, um, what did we do? Which was my birthday. Yes. Um, we went to Mexico, which was um, very fun. I love Mexico, and I just I just love um, the people in Mexico. Yeah. They're just great. Um, That's so, really what, like, makes those trips. Yeah. Whenever we, whenever we go anywhere in Mexico, it's like, yeah, sure, it's beautiful, um, but really, like, the thing that just, like, separates it from any yeah. other experience anywhere is the people. Yeah. Like the just the yeah, staff just like and their people culture that you meet just, are yeah, so yeah. special. So sweet, so hardworking, so kind, so funny, so thoughtful. We yeah. It was a great time. I love what they do. Like yeah. they're just so passionate about life. Yeah. It's um it's really cool. But yeah, yeah, that was a heck of a trip. Um it was really nice to just um I really I really needed a little unplug disconnect from um our life so it was it was a nice little reset which was good and you know it's a great reminder for all of us you know obviously i'm not saying go book a trip and spend a bunch of money and do that but it's a good reminder to even just put your phone away for like half a day you know take a sunday go for a drive go for a walk put your phone on do not disturb or just put it in the other room uh because it's mentally it is just such a release yeah and that's i think what i really needed um mental resets yeah recharges you know whatever it looks like yeah important yeah um yeah but i turned 27 and as you guys have kind of heard me talk about before i was a little um i was a little uneasy about it yeah how you at feeling first now? um now i feel better the night the night before my birthday i did cry a little in bed to myself stop i did i did have a couple of tears no it was just like this weird it was just like a trend. It's it. I I wasn't crying because I was sad. It was more of a cry of like a transition, of like a, I'm getting older and like you know we've talked about how before how I kind of feel like I missed out on my mid twenties because of COVID and I like there's part of me that feels like a lot of like pressure, more in, more anticipation, kind of. Because, you know, 27, then it's 28, then it's 29, then it's 30. And you got to have kids. What are you doing for work? All these things. Yeah. Like, and I kind of just started to feel the pressure of that. And I was like, when did I like. Just have like the new chapter yeah. of life. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm, I feel great now. Um, you know, I'm excited about it. And um, actually, Kristen, you check, she posted something on her story that I loved. And it was just, you know, all these people that founded like Adidas and just all of these, you know, Major. big, big companies. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they didn't start making these things until they were, like, in their 40s, half of these people. They didn't start well, yeah, these companies. It gave, it gave, you know, examples of people that, you know, found these crazy companies that ended up, you know, exploding yeah. in their 40s, in their 50s, yeah. like, all the way up to, like, their 70s. Yeah, I think I saw it right before my birthday. I reposted it, and a lot of you guys were like, I needed to see this today. Yeah. Um. So that was just a good reminder for me. And I also have, like you to look at um because you are like a little older and i just remind myself man. i remind myself that it's not scary yeah um i'll i'll get in front of you thank you babe and um i'll i'll lead the charge thank you honey but i feel i feel good now i'm excited and yeah i i keep forgetting that i am 27 though because i just kind of feel old um but also this month i surprised my 85 year old nana for her 85th birthday. That would be Irene. Irene. Renee. Irene. <laughs> my, my, my nana. Um, but that was one of the best decisions I think I've made to date was going out there. It was very last minute. My mom and I flew out there and surprised her. Um, if you guys follow me, you probably saw it. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I actually just re-saw the TikTok today. I think like people enjoyed that. It's, it's just so sweet. Yeah. Um, You're welcome for the song recommendation. What song? What, what was it? The Billie Eilish oh, Barbie one. Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah. had some, like, oh, freaking, like, EDM music or something crazy. 
It was a t- for the tattoo one. So my my nana and I have this love for um, for butterflies. Her she lost her mom at a young age, and her mom always told her that she would come back as a white butterfly. And my nana sees butterflies all the time. I see butterflies all the time. Uh, you may be thinking there's butterflies everywhere, but it's just something that's special to us. Um, and I always told my Nana I wanted to get a butterfly tattoo for her because she's like one of my favorite people in this whole world. And a couple years ago, she was like, hey, have you gotten that tattoo yet? And I was like, no, I haven't. And she was like, I want to get it with you, which is crazy because my Nana is like old school. Your body's a temple. You don't do anything on it. Um, so I was like, oh my gosh, yes, we're going to do that, Nana. Um, so when I decided last minute to go surprise her, I was like, where I need to get a tattoo. I ended up getting connected with Bubba and, um, he was on, um, what's it called? Master. Uh-huh. um, great guy. If you guys are ever in like the Scottsdale area, you need to go see him. He was amazing, but we got matching butterflies tattoos together and it was just like the most tender, sweetest special moment and my nana was a freaking beast getting the tattoo she just like laid there didn't flinch we got home she's just staring at her arm she's like it's so cute i love it i know i was i was worried i was like was she gonna like get home and it like hit her yeah and not like regret it but be like oh my like this is on my body yeah but she's like still obsessed with it it's so cute yeah it's so cute i love her and i love you i know you're gonna watch watch this on your tv never too late you're never, never, never too late to get your first tattoo. Oh. That's for sure. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of March. This past weekend, we had our first ever Change Your Brain and the Lemons Foundation Pickleball Tournament, uh, which was so fun. Oh, my gosh. We ended up, we were a little nervous if it was going to happen because L.A., Southern California, I mean, California in general, we've just been hit with so much rain. It's been crazy. I don't understand. But it rained the morning of. But, uh a lot of people came out and squeegeed the courts and everyone was like, we're playing rain or shine. The sun came out. It was a glorious day. It was my first tournament I ever played in. Um, I I don't know how you people do it. Pickleball? Yeah. Well, a tournament like that. I was exhausted. I played eight 11 minute games. Yeah. After the fourth one, I was like, dad, uh, I put, my dad was my partner. <laughs> um, I was like, dad, how many freaking more games do we have? I'm exhausted. Yeah. It was tiring. It was a good workout. I am a little sore. It was a great workout. Yeah. Man, it's a great workout for your brain. It is. Dr. Amon says. As Dr. Amon says. Any paddle. Yeah. Paddle, paddle, racket, racket. ping pong, tennis, pickleball. Yeah. It's good for your brain. Yeah. I, um, unfortunately, woke up the morning of the pickleball tournament sick. So I couldn't go. Um, And I was devastated. He was very sad. It was sad. I was rooting for you from the sidelines. And that's why I had to play with my dad. Who were you? What? Oh, because I was going to play with your dad. Yeah. 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 So my dad was a good sport and you guys like would have won if I don't you know. guys were partners. I don't know. You guys would have done better than my dad and I did oh. as partners. Yeah. 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 <laughs> my dad was a great sport. He, <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, um, we got some quality father daughter time together. There you go. That was, that was the moral of the story. No, but it was a great day. Um, so thankful for Dr. Amen. Uh, Jason Waller has, um, uh, helps run his foundation and he is just a gem of a human is so awesome to work with. Uh, but everyone that is on Dr. Amen's team is just so great. Everyone to change your brain. Um, they're just so kind. And it was, it was in the being such an amazing day. I left I'm very happy. I'm happy. You just got to be at the next one now. Yeah, I will not miss the next one. Yeah. (laughs) Make sure we schedule that around you. Fingers crossed. Hair thinning is complicated. And the problem is it's actually bigger than your hair alone. Like your skin, hair is a reflection of your health. Internal factors can impact the way your hair looks, feels, and grows. Nutrafol's whole body approach multi-targets underlying root causes like stress, hormone malfunctions, and nutrient gaps for visibly thicker and stronger hair. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. I love Nutrafol's personalized approach to hair thinning and shedding issues because there isn't a one-size-fits-all. There's truly, everyone is different and that goes the same for our hair. 
Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter code the squeeze. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and stylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Go to Nutrafol.com, spelled N U T R A F O L dot com, promo code the squeeze. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code the squeeze. If you're like me and at the drop of the hat can sing any Cheetah Girl song, can redo any high school musical choreography um, without a second thought, then you're probably a millennial. And if you're a millennial, it's time to add Clarins multi-active cream to your daily routine. Rooted in nature and innovated with science, Clarins has a long legacy of creating industry-first plant-forward products. And even though I'm still in my 20s, I know it's important to take care of your skin no matter how old you are to prevent signs of aging. I've already begun to notice my skin has been more glowy and my pores have been looking smaller, which is something that we all love. Go to Clarence.com slash the squeeze to get multi-active day and night cream for 10% off a free welcome gift plus free shipping on your first order. All of the above. That's Clarence, C-L-A-R-I-N-S.com slash the squeeze with promo code the squeeze. Clarence.com slash the squeeze, promo code the squeeze. You guys enjoy. Okay, I think it's time we head into a segment. Which which one would that be? Um, tea time. Tea time. With Tay. With Tay. With Tay. Is that what vocal fry is? What? Is that what vocal fry is? Uh... I've seen people like comment about it. Like Daisy did a video that people were saying she has vocal fry. Some people have said you have it too. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what it means. I think it just is it like is, you're like uh Yeah. I think it just like when you talk like quietly, like it sounds like this. Interesting. You know, just, when you were a kid, wouldn't you you never went like uh Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> kids were obsessed. I used to do that. Maybe I was the only one. Sorry for that. I hope you zoom in on your face when you do that. Oh, oh, oh I'm losing it. You good? I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm good, okay, I'm let's good. head into the segment. Yeah. Tea time with Tay. Let's go. Woo! If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? You. Okay. Okay. Well, we're having dinner later, so I pick someone else. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, this is also a two-part question. Oh, man, that is a tough decision. I don't know. Oh, I guess I have to answer this question, too. Uh, dang. Dead or alive? Yeah. Like, I mean, my gut reaction is like, Tom Brady. Oh, that's good. Like, but there's probably probably some dead people that would be a freaking amazing. Yeah, um, mine would be Thomas Edison. Okay, there talk you go. About, talk about the light bulb. There's, yep, that's a good example. Mm-hmm. The part two of this question is, would you let them pick up the tab? If it was Thomas Edison, yeah. Yeah, me too. He could pick it up. I think yeah. he's... Do you think he, like, made money? <sighs> I mean, he had to. Like, do you think his family... <laughs> Do you think is <laughs> Yeah, like where's the Edison family now? Yeah, like what are they like are they getting um back ends on everyone using electricity? <laughs> I don't know. All the electricity that's run in the world, all the power, like Southern California, Edison, like they should be getting a back end from that. Edison's hit us up. <laughs> We'd love How to you know. Guys, uh, We'd love to know your financial statements. <laughs> yeah. If you could just uh yeah, come be a guest and let's let's take a look at the the bank accounts. The bank statements. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for the light. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for the bulbs. Um, next question is, what's the last song you listened to on repeat? I know you have this answer. So yeah. hit us. Um, all too well, 10 minute version. Oh, what? It is just, it's, this is always my song. Yeah. I was going to say that's always your answer. I know because, because I don't think there's a better song. You think that is the best song? I think so. <laughs> I can be in any mood and listen to that song and by the six minute mark I am like I'm there yeah what's the thing you do on the plane with it or something whenever I'll do it during 
takeoff, but mainly during landing when there's 10 minutes left before we like touch down, I'll play it. Yeah. And it helps me like because I have you'll be there I have, when it finishes. Yeah, I have some flight anxiety. Um, so that's my like yeah, you just blast that during routine. takeoff and landing. Yeah. So funny. The words are just so it's it's so good. No, it's a great song. Yeah. It's I mean, yeah, it's, it's a 10 minute song. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, that's mine. OK, fair enough. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Um, I would probably you you. I think yours is. I mean, what I've gathered from being in the car with you is Zach Bryan like live at Red Rocks. That's been your on repeat. I ju- yeah. I I recently um yeah downloaded that on Spotify. And yeah. I've been listening to the whole show. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I kind of want to go to a show. Is he still on tour? Uh, maybe. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. He's great. And yeah, the Red Rock show is super cool. I'm going to go see him. If you had a time machine, would you go to the past or to the future? Past. Yeah, I would go go past too. Yeah, I don't think I want to know what's in the future. I would love to. Oh, that's a good point. Um, I would, I would like love to, when I hear that, I would want to see like my grandparents, like meet their parents and like where they grew up. I mean. That's a good point. You know, like. My Nana was raised in like Saudi Arabia, lived in Ethiopia, like all these insane places. Yeah. Um, so that would be really cool. Yeah. I think that's a, yeah, that's a good one. If you could have any fictional technology from a movie, what would it be? Any fictional technology from a movie? Okay. I have this. Okay, what? Are you ready for this? Um, probably not. Go. Smart house. Oh, wow. Throwback smart house yeah that's true if you haven't seen smart house then i don't know if we can be friends <laughs> it's a disney channel original movie oh we love this um and a decom they're like it's so funny because pro- half of that movie does exist now yeah we should rewatch that i know well actually i did, i did see um i saw like a clip from it uh-huh. some sometime recently and it was um shockingly disappointing oh <laughs> um but yeah i'll just pretend i didn't see that yeah. terrific movie um but no it is crazy that like yeah. i don't know it probably came out 20 years ago um and like you know half of the stuff exists now but the coolest part from what i can remember was like when they'd be in the kitchen yeah and they would like talk to yeah what was that's her the name? Best part. oh i don't remember and like she makes you like orange juice on the spot yeah. or whatever it is like a meal like yeah you just talked to the house and the house could do whatever you asked it to do you know whatever yeah. you wanted yeah um i might want to be like the iron man suit i don't know oh I feel like that could be cool wow yeah or like batman selfishly but no iron man probably okay you trying to, like, fight some bad guys? Get that suit on? No, I'm trying to freaking, like, fly around. Oh, okay. Yeah. And protect myself, yeah. Maybe that. Okay. I'll, we'll hit up Robert Downey. Yeah. Okay. Do you think he, like, has one of those in his house? Mm, no. Uh, you don't think he has a suit in his house? Do I think Robert Downey Jr., the human, has an iron... Oh. Like, one of the versions yeah. he wore in the movie? Like, yeah. in, like, a glass case or something? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I actually could see him being, like too cool to like i don't i don't picture him being like a too you know, cool in a respectful way yeah I, I i don't picture him being like wanting to brag about himself yeah i see that you know i couldn't i don't think he's the type of guy to be like yeah take a look that's my uh that's my suit from iron man three pretty cool huh yeah yeah he doesn't give off that showy vibe either yeah but like it's a re- it's like- that's an iconic character, though. Oh, for sure. I'll house it for him if he needs somewhere to yeah, put that's it. That's probably my, like, the first one is probably my favorite superhero movie. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, those movies are great. I love all of them. Okay, next one. If you can only eat one cuisine for the rest of your life, what would it be? Cuisine. Okay, so not, not cuisine. one meal. One cuisine for the rest of your life. Let's see. Huh. Do you have that? Uh, see, my go-to is always sushi because I love sushi, but... Well, I don't think sushi is a cuisine. <laughs> right? Wouldn't, like... I guess, yeah. But... Type of food? Like, 
Japanese food. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, Thai food. Ooh, Indian food. Oh, frick. I actually, I don't have an answer to this question. I like food. Um, yeah. See, yeah. My gut reactions were either, I feel like Italian yeah, I need can give you such a wide range of things. Yeah. Like, Italian has amazing food other than pizza and pasta. Yeah. And bread. Yeah, that's so true. You know? Yeah. Like amazing chicken dishes and, and uh, just such a wide spectrum. I feel like Italian might be. But also, like good, good Mexican food. Yeah. I do enjoy Mexican food. Like we, you know, you saw the food that we just ate. Yeah. And while in Mexico for five days. Yeah. Again, Mexican food, people like tacos, burritos, like yeah. chips and salsa. Like the food we ate was unbelievable. Hey, don't get me wrong. I can down some guac. I no, can eat guac sure with every no, meal. I love all those things, but it, they have so much more. Yeah. Um, I love Mexican food. Yeah. Whew. I think we need to go travel and like try some more. I really want to go to Japan. Our friend is there right now. And she's just posting all of her food and it's making me really jealous. That's yeah. my next place I want to go. The last time I was there, I didn't eat sushi yet oh yeah you shared the story before so we need to yeah we need to go back now yeah. that i love sushi yeah that's great okay last tea time and take question is oh on on the topic of food if you can have dinner in any city in the world today which city would it be any city in the world okay uh yeah oh. i'm gonna spin off I'm, I'm gonna say like tokyo oh yeah yeah great um that was easy yeah yeah it, yeah a, a city in Japan. Yeah. Um, Osaka has good food too, I've heard. Just have amazing sushi and fish. Yeah. Like, yeah. All the food. All like the little like. Also, I've never really. pastries. I don't. I've like, you know, been to Italy multiple times, but always in and out. I've never spent more than like 24 hours in Italy. So I, I really think I want to, like, you know, have authentic, fantastic Italian food. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't either. Yeah. I guess we just have to travel more. Okay. I guess that's the answer. Okay. Okay. Twist my arm. <laughs> no. We're going to head into a segment that last time we did a solo episode, I left you guys hanging. I told you guys that Next time we did a solo episode, we would let you know the name of our advice segment. Is this the next solo episode? This is the next solo episode wow. from that. So we're um, technically not breaking our promise. I'm not. It's just taken us three months to do another it solo just episode. It's just taken a little longer than expected, but it, is, it has come. Okay. The reveal. New segment is called. <laughs> you want to say it? You want me to say it? You got this slice of advice yeah this is a segment where my lovely wife and i will take um questions and i i put on my instagram story a little bit back um you know any scenarios predicaments going on in your life that you want to hear our unsolicited opinions on um and we are gonna offer advice it may not be the best but um you know we're gonna try and yeah, this is a slice of advice. Here we go. Okay, so these are real questions. Yes. That came in. From you. From you. So um, do you have these or do I have these? I have them. Okay. I mean, technically you do too. Yeah. I wrote them down, but they're on your phone too. Oh, okay. Um, okay, let's get into it. First advice question is, what green flags do you look for in friendships? What green flags do you look for in friendships? I would say something that I look for is um, someone that has a good sense of humor, like someone that I could be like sarcastic with or, you know, um, give them a, like a sarcastic dig and they know that it's in a loving way, like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and someone that I can just like be honest with. Like, that I can just, like, authentically just, like, be myself. Yeah. Do you mean, like, 
not feeling judged by. Yeah. Like no matter what it is, yeah. not feeling judgment. Yeah. Because I definitely, um, I mean, I would say I'm a loving person, but I definitely am sarcastic and I definitely um, call people out on things in the loving way. Um, I just kind of like say it how it is in yeah. a nice way. Yeah. And, you know, my close friends know that and yeah. they, I think, love that mm-hmm. um, and love me for that. But that's, that is like, like intimacy and friendship for me is like honesty like that. Yeah. Uh, if I am doing something and you're a close friend of mine, and you don't like it. If you come up to me and say, hey, like you said this and it kind of came off this way and I didn't like it or, you know, you do this and it made me feel a certain way. That is like, I love that. That's gold to me. Yeah. Like being able to have like an open and honest uh, relationship with. Yeah. That's, that's something that I love. And is a green flag for me? I had so many things that popped through my brain. I'll, I'll see if I can even remember them. Um, but yeah, I would say, and I think it kind of ties um, together with that a little bit, is like a good listener. Like, yeah. it's something I strive for um, to be, but I also want that out of a friendship. Yeah. Um, is somebody that is just a fantastic listener and really cares about what you have to say and whatever you're going through. Yeah. Um, I think that's high up there for me. And I do, and I, you kind of touched on this as well, not a yes person. Um, like, of course, we need our friends to build us up and yeah. make us feel like superheroes. That has to exist too. Yeah. But also somebody that will, yeah, yeah. Like Tay said, lovingly call you out. And let you know um, when they think, you know, you've, you're heading down the wrong path or have overstepped or, you know, whatever it is. Just yeah, having that honesty. Um, also, Ooh, also, I think I had so many things. This is a fraction of what my brain was doing. I guess this was a good question to start on then. <laughs> um, I think somebody that will equally if not more so be there for you during the lows yeah than the highs yeah right we all have life is a roller coaster for each and every one of us whatever it looks like we all have highs we all have lows um and that's gonna happen and those friends that are in your life and you start hearing from and they're always there when you're crushing it and everything's going right, it's great. But your real friends are going to be there just as much, if not more, during your lows. Yeah. During our low seasons, um, the friends that don't turn their back and run disappear. You stop hearing from them. That's, you know, that's okay to have them as friends. But like your, your closest inner circle friends, that's yeah. when they show up. Yeah. I thought of one when you said low, I thought of low maintenance friends. That is something that is my, that is such a big green flag for me. Oh my gosh. Low maintenance friends, low maintenance friends. I cannot stress that enough. If you yeah. have a high maintenance friend, I feel like that is the most stressful thing. Yeah. Especially, you know, when you get older and you're working and yeah. you are married and you have a family and you're doing all of these things. Life looks different. Yeah. When you have those like high expectations and you, you're constantly feeling like you're not showing up, you yeah. know, like it's that there's, it's a very stressful feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like all of our close friends are low maintenance in the best way. Like I can, you know, I can call them up whenever or text them. Like my, even my friends that live in the state, like sometimes I'll see them like every couple of months we talk, like we'll text a lot, but like physically seeing them. Yeah. Like isn't that often, but it doesn't feel like we're distant or anything. Yeah. It's just, you know, we all got stuff going on in our life and mutually understanding that, hey, even though we don't see each other or talk all the time, I love you and you love me and we value our friendship. So that's that's kind of all that matters. Yeah. Great question. Next one is my medication keeps making me gain weight. How can I learn to love my changing body? Mm-hmm. That's a very good question. Something that always pops in my head is the Megan Trainer thing. And I'm probably going to get it wrong because this was a while ago that she talked about this. But 
Okay, she, we can look it up. Um, she has talked about struggling with that, and she said how she would stand in front of the mirror naked every day and, you know, say positive affirmations about herself and say one thing that she liked. And, you know, after, like, days and weeks of doing this, she learned to genuinely love her body. And I think that is something that we can all implement and something that's very easy to do if you got a mirror. Yeah. Um, But also just the reminder of, you know, our bodies are always changing. And when it comes to, you know, medication or some, you know, autoimmune diseases, something that you're going through, um, trying to teach your brain to look at health differently. Yeah. And health not being, you know, what size jeans you are or what size top you're wearing if you've gone up a size or whatever it may be. Health is, you know, making sure you're eating the right foods, making sure you're getting a good enough amount of sleep, making sure you're feeding yourself the good, like good content. Yeah. That is health. And I think that's like a good basis of mental health too. But um, trying to shift your focus on focusing on what true health is and not just um what size jeans you are yeah i i think i think that is the biggest thing right there and trust me it is easier said than done for sure um you know i certainly deal with that um i th- i think we all deal with a form of it but yeah i think that's it like as we get older we realize how important health is and um yeah just prioritizing your inner health because you want to you want to live well first of all we want to be here like yeah we we want to be here in you know 30 40 years whatever yeah um and we want to be living our healthiest happiest life and just understanding that doesn't always mean looking like what you want to look like in the mirror yeah um but looking like what standard society is set as beauty or whatever it may be that's it that's difficult sometimes yeah so i'm i'm with you but yeah it it is important to remind yourself that constantly because the mind is so powerful yeah and um you really need to just um like what is like dr amen (laughs) said love we always go back to dr amen but like he he says at the start of each day the first thing you say is today's going to be a great day. Yep. And just like waking up, saying that out loud and believing it and then getting out of bed, yeah. it truly does affect your brain in yeah. the way you look at things for the rest of the day. And I feel like it's the same thing. You know, it's just the mind is powerful. Yeah. No, that's great. Next question is if we should keep having just one cat or adopt six more cats so he can have six siblings. Okay, that yes. was a turn. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Maybe start with getting one cat, one one additional cat. Right, because they so let's they have one cat. They have one, and they're they're deciding whether to <laughs> stick with one. Having cat. just having just our one cat, or adopt six more cats so he can have six siblings. Okay. Yeah, I think increments would. Yeah, probably maybe one at a time, just so just so you can feel it out. You know, one to si- one to six, <laughs> one or to one seven, seven is a, <laughs> quite a jump. Is, a, is um, different. I know one dog to two dogs was a major jump. Huge. Cats are different, but um, yeah, maybe do one at a time. And you love cats. You're... I do love cats, but I would I would say yeah, maybe we just do one at a time. Try it just yeah. to be safe because that's like a lot of food, a lot of litter to be cleaned, a lot of hair. Wow, a lot of nails to trim yeah a lot of cat toys yeah i think i think increments you know just yeah test it out yeah. before you make that you know full yeah. commitment not zero to 100 zero to like 25 yeah um next question is advice for workaholics who need to learn to leave time for working out self-care etc i think my husband wrote this question to call me out well, well no i didn't um but i will let you answer it well i mean i don't know if i have the answer to it um <laughs> yeah that's okay. that's something that i struggle with a lot because you know like we have podcasts we have the foundation lemons by tay um i just feel like there's you know we have so many projects and in my brain goes like if i'm not working on it like they're not going to grow they're not going to get better all of these things and 
trying to learn to turn that off at some point has been a little hard for me. But when I do turn it off, it has been very rewarding uh, because you have to remember, like, you need rest. Yeah, burnout. Yeah, or else you get burnt out and then, you know, you lose your passion. You can't think of good ideas, whatever it may be. Um, but also, you just, like, feel good after working out. Well, I mean, I think the answer to this question is, you know, what we just talked about, about going to Mexico and, like, us, like, me taking some time to, like, actually be off of my phone for a couple of days and not work. Um, and maybe it's easiest for somebody struggling with this to schedule the breaks. You yes. know, if somebody is so schedule oriented and That's just me. feels like, you know, if I'm not doing X, Y, or Z, then I'm falling behind. Or, you know, if I'm doing nothing, you know, I'm not, I'm not moving forward. Um, I think it's smart to implement those breaks or whatever it is into your schedule yeah. and just stick to it. Be like, hey, you know, sorry, guys, like, you know, from two to four tomorrow, yeah. I have something. Yeah, or, you know, get like, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you go take Pilates at 9 a.m., like getting that in your schedule Implement and making your, that like, yeah. because, you know, I'll get, you know, all of these calls filled up and Taylor's like, let's go work out. I'm like, oh, no, I can't have this, this and this. But when we actually put it in the calendar, I'm like, oh, well, I can't schedule anything. So yeah. I can't get out of it. And I like have to do it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's definitely something that I'm still working on and we can work on it together. Um, next question. Uh, I don't even know how to answer this. Um, on spring break with a friend and her grandma keeps yelling at me because I'm eating. What the F do I do? <laughs> I love this segment. Um, are you chewing with your mouth open? If, yeah, it, I, yeah, I, yeah. Maybe assess the chew. If that's the issue. Yeah. Then assess. I'm with grandma. Yeah. But it, if not, grandma, you need to chill. Yeah. Like, you're on spring break. Yeah. You should yeah. be able to eat as much as you want. Come on, grandma. That is so funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What the F do I do? <laughs> what the F do I do? Grandma. Um, yeah. If you're not eating with your mouth open. No. Um, and if you are not the problem. Lips, then um, keep eating. Yeah. Keep eating, girl. You're on spring break. Enjoy it. Okay, next one is, how do I handle a panic attack at school or in public? This one, um, I I have this thing. I think I've maybe talked about it before. Um, I probably every other time I get my nails done, I have like a little bit of a panic attack. Um, Which is so strange. I like know. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Like, no. Well, that's why I keep that's like why? Then, then people some people have like I've told them that and they're like, then stop getting your nails done. But I'm like, no, then I'm letting my anxiety get the best of me and yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Because I've gotten my nails done my entire life and I've been fine until, you know, I don't know what the frick happened, but yeah. you know, some some weird PTSD thing that happened in my brain from working COVID, I now that now happens to me. Um it doesn't happen with getting my hair cut anymore. It used to happen when I would like get the cape on me. It hasn't happened in a very long time, knock on wood. Um but um, when that does happen, uh, this is something that I've had to work on. So it wasn't like the first time I did this, I was like, um, you know, down pack. But when I start to feel any form of panic or anxiety coming on, I kind of just like, I do two things. Um, one is I just remind myself that I'm in a safe place. Uh, I've been here before, you know, every time I get my nails done, I'm like, I've been here before. I know exactly what's going to happen. My feet are going to go in the water. They're going to do this. Like I walk myself through the steps that are going to be happening or what that I am safe, that I've been here before. I know this is coming. I know that I'm not going to let my anxiety or my panic take over and that it's going to pass with time. It will pass. So I just keep telling myself it will pass. Like we're going to get through this. You're not going to throw up. I get very nauseous and I feel like I, I have gotten out of the chair, like literally wet feet running to the bathroom at the nail salon before because I feel like I'm going to throw up. But you never have. But I never done. have. And it's just it's just the way my panic attacks show themselves, I guess. Hmm. Um, but uh, I tell myself, you know, you're you're OK. You're not going to throw up. You're just you're in a panic right now. So I just coach myself through it in my brain. Obviously, that has taken you know, I've been struggling with this for like 
two, three years. So two years. So it's been a bit of a process, but also there's a great grounding uh, technique that is the like five, four, three, two, one thing. I'm going to read it so I don't get it messed up, but identify five things you can see. So, you know, looking around you, what you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. Going through that, I've used before and that's definitely helped me. Or even if you can't remember what the five, four, three, two, what's what, I just tell myself, I can feel this, like the metal on the chair is cold. I can hear an airplane. I can feel the headphones, you know, touching my ears, like walking through that. Um, and the last thing I would say is don't, don't run from whatever, where you are when you're having that panic attack. That's actually something shocker. Dr. Amon taught me. Um, that's one of the worst things you can do. Obviously, if you feel you're in an unsafe space, get to a safe space, but um, don't run yeah. if you can. Next one is, I'm in love with my best friend's ex, but their relationship was minuscule and short. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, maybe talk to your friend about that one. Yeah. Is it your current best friend? Then, yeah. And then. does, do they still have feelings for their ex? I mean, their relationship was minuscule and short. And why are they their ex? Is that a red flag that you should assess? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It sounds like that just needs to be an honest conversation. Yeah. I mean, you're saying you're in love with this person, but it happens to be your current best friend's ex, but it was a little, you know, minuscule relationship. I think that's just an honest conversation with your friend. Um, you know, just telling them your true feelings and that you are, you know, scared, um, what they may think and you do want to, you know, prioritize your friendship and, but you just, you know, felt like you needed to be honest about your feelings and at least just get it out there and see what they said. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Hmm. Next one. Ooh, this one hits home. My partner and I disagree on the toilet paper roll, over or under. Oh, wow. One, two, three, over. over. If whoever... <laughs> Period, end of story. Whoever is on. saying pull it under... No, we got to go. You got it wrong. I'm, yeah, we got it wrong. It's so it's much more hands. difficult to break it off. Like, over, it's just crisp and clean. Yeah. Very simple, easy to rip it off. Under presents so many problems. I'm very passionate about this. Um, yeah. If yeah, if I ever am anywhere and it is under, I switch it to over. I have to. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it and I won't. And he will not. Okay, two more. Okay. Advice on long distance friendships. Well, funny you should ask because we have a long distance friendships. Um, with our friends because they moved away from us. Yeah. Sad. Um, no, and these but people are some of our very, very best friends. Yeah. I mean, Tay's my best honor. friend, maid of honor. One of your groomsmen. And one of my groomsmen. Um, but no, we love them. They up and moved to Austin on us. Um, we were devastated. But no, we've, we've been able to, well, something that, you know, we've been very good at implementing is, making sure like every every month every couple months you know depending on work and life we'll set up a time like for a facetime call like a catch-up but basically like over dinner is like what we'll do like yeah and we we talk to them more than that yes but outside of texting with them talking to them little conversation here and there the lifesaver for us has been yeah let's have let's, let's have dinner tonight together and we'll yeah. have you know, a glass of wine and dinner on FaceTime for an hour and a half, mm -hmm. two right. hours, yeah, more whatever. Than that. Yeah. Um, Long time. Yeah. And just like, yeah, do something like that together. Ske schedule it too. Don't yeah. just be like, oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Which, yeah. I mean, reminds we me. We all know that. We, we need to schedule our next we, one. We Mar do. And Ryan, yeah, sorry. We're due. Um, we are. We are overdue. Uh, but yeah, that that's something that is very important to implement. And, you know, it's fun. Like if we're all drinking wine at the same time, that's fun. Yeah. Like it makes it, it feels like, you know, well, it's not back in COVID. That doesn't sound fun, but it feels like you're together in a way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love that. Okay. Last one. I can't pick a favorite type of sponge. Mm. 
Okay. Do we mean like a sea sponge or like a cleaning sponge? Um, I'm going to go with a cleaning sponge and I, um, I pulled up some photos of sponges for oh. you, which we will pull up on the screen. Oh. Um, we have the, can you see this? Okay. Yeah. Um, we have the, I can't even see this. The original sponge, compressed sponge, melamine, melamine, PU sponge. Don't know. Wave shape sponge. Ooh, like that one. I'm con- is not this sponge. an easy answer for us? Yeah, well, I was just showing there. There is there is quite a few a bathing sponge, yoga mat. That's a sponge. Yes, Cellular sponge. sponge. I I assume they're talking about a cleaning sponge. Yeah, yeah. There's a very simple answer. It actually isn't even on this photo. I, I bet we're gonna disagree. Oh, what? Go ahead. Scrub what? daddy. Nope. The scrub, scrub mommy me. with the bow. The yeah. Scrub mommy is scrub better. Mommy's good. Yeah, Scrub Daddy is just like... Yeah, no, but Scrub, scrub Daddy. Um, or Mommy. They were, you know, they were on Shark Tank. I do. I do know that. Um, biggest um, biggest success from Shark Tank. I love that. Scrub Daddy. But love, yeah, love a Scrub go Daddy. Go get yourself a Scrub Mommy. Save your life. Yeah, that's that's probably my, my... Yeah, that's the best sponge. And that, I think, is a great way to end our episode. <laughs> scrub Mommy? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this solo episode has been terrific, and we, I'm telling you, we say it all the time, we need to do them more often. I know. Let us know if you like these, or do you like us more than us? Yeah. I, won't, I won't be butthurt, because technically I'm in every one of these, so. Get in Tay's DMs, and start demanding these. While you're, like, on your phone, too, you should make sure you subscribe and follow. That, too. To the Squeeze channel. Yes. Um, we have a fun couple next episodes, the next one. Has something to do with the Lemons Foundation. Yes. And then, um, yeah, we just we no. got a we got a lineup. Yeah, next week we're great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, next no, week. Don't give away anything. Okay. Well, you be on the lookout for that because you followed or subscribed, so you're not going to miss it. Yeah. We hope that you guys have a marvelous rest of your day. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts again for um, spending your time with us, and we can't wait to see you next week. Toodles. Bye. Close your eyes, shut your mouth, dream a dream and get us out. Dream, 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 dream. Hit the hay, fast asleep, dream a dream, you little bleep. Dream, 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 dream. Okay, bye. This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation.